my father and came from Grey uh, He lived in a, in a street that was called Hard Breed Raw. Do so you know what that means? No. Uh, hard Bread Row. <laughs> if your bread was hard. But uh, he, li- he, li- he lived there. Um, they, were all, they were all involved in building. My father was a brickner. Um, and my grandfather, he was a stonemason. And my uncles, they would have been, some of them would have been joiners and some of them would have been electricians and all that sort of thing, you know. Uh, on my on my mother's side of the family, they were called uh, they were called Gunning, and they came from Valley Walter, and they, the the part of Valley Walter called Sand End. Um, my my grandfather was he was a carpenter, and worked on liners and you know did the woodwork and the liners and stuff like that. So that's where that's where the my, the family actually st- started. Um, my mother was very, very ill when we were young, and we moved back to live with my grandfather. Uh, um, my, by that time, my grandma had actually died, but we moved back to that house, and that was in Pound Street in New North, and right in the centre of the town. My, my father, uh, just at the, just after the end of the war, he had a very good job in in McKees in the shipyard, which were big, big contractors. He was the sort of head foreman in that. And uh, he and his father and his brother decided to start up on their own as uh, a con- uh, contractors. Yeah. I can remember clearly um, the day he stopped working, and it was almost like a big trauma in our family that, that he was giving up this job, you know. And I can remember him coming down Pound Street, you know, you know where Pound Street is, yeah? Yes. I remember him coming down Pound Street carrying his big box, you know, the joiner's box, uh, to, and he was giving up the job. And uh, they they developed into that until uh, my father was actually, he was, the, he was the runner of the firm, you know, he actually, the, he had experience of, you know, doing big jobs and all the rest and he did not and uh, they were they were very successful and built a number of big 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 jobs and yeah that wasn't they weren't just building one or two houses or something like that they uh, they built londonderry primary school right. uh they built bangor police station you know the, the big one in the, yeah. the yeah. castle grounds yeah. uh, built a couple of big schools in belfast as well so they, they, they were very very successful when we came to the, the transfer sort of age uh, I I, could, I just can't believe it actually happened, but it it must have been connected to the forty seven education act or something that they des- they were decided that there was going to be a s- schools called intermediate schools, okay. and uh, I was in the, in uh, the model primary school on the Scrubber Road, and I and a, and a few other children were transferred to Mavilla into uh, the first year of what would be the intermediate, intermediate school. My, uh, I think it had been gone, it had been going the year before because my older brother, he was already there. And we actually sat the transfer, which they called the qualifying in those days, we actually sat that in my villa at the end of the first year. Now you can imagine uh, in, how, in this modern day, what the psychologists and say, what we would all be saying about, you know, because I, I can remember we, we actually walked from the villa to the model to do the qualifying exam, you know, and a big, big crocodile, you know, walked through the town. <laughs> that, that would have been about 1950, 51, 52 or something like that. I was the first in our family to go to a grammar school. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody would ever imagine going to a grammar yeah. school before that because uh, I think in, pr- prior to that, You'd be one of the people who owned shops and all sorts of things, and, and you'd have gone to the prep school, and then you'd have gone through. Yeah. I loved, I loved school. Right. I, I, I would have stayed in Regent House for until I was forty. I could have got away with it. I, I loved actually, I loved education. You know, I loved science and all that sort of thing. But I loved sport, and and the Regent House to me was landing on the moon. You know, the the. Uh, I played I played rugby there and I played cricket. I think actually I still hold a record there in that uh, I think I was the only person that may, or may, may have changed in the last few, few years on who actually was captain of the rugby and captain of the cricket at the same time. The the principal of Regent House in those days was a man called James MacDonald and he was either a colonel or a lieutenant colonel in the army and uh, 
he obviously came back after the war and took over his own house. He was a, a bit, he was a disciplinarian, you know, but you know, nobody would have dared say anything you know, to him or something. He was good, he was just he was above all of that. But he was an absolutely brilliant cricketer. That's why well, right. I, I, I always looked up to him because yeah. he was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> he was a brilliant, brilliant cricketer. Yeah. But the, the, the other whole part of my life has been involved with the Irish Cricket Club. You know. uh-huh. I always had a dream that Irish Cricket would actually get somewhere, you know. <laughs> but after 65 years in the club, sort of the club, I'm sort of coming to the conclusion maybe they're not, you know. Uh, at the time when I was playing, up until first round of playing, up to say the mid 80s, ours were always up there, you know, in the top, the top junior team. Mm. And they were very close to sort of hitting senior, maybe not just quite making it, but they're always in that sort of zone. The biggest problem ours has had over the years was that their ground was never up to the level, mm. you know. And your share with someone else, but and that's what my hope is at the minute that you know that this ground, this new facility may in fact attract. It was interesting actually in the opening of Londonderry Park, but Lady Londonderry said, I don't like cricket. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> <laughs> that was part of her speech. She said, I don't really like cricket, you know. That's all right. Huh? <laughs>